welcome back, everybody. It's time once again for another episode of OC Spotlight. The one show, maybe the only show, that shows you what's happening here in the community. And have we got, I always say this, I always say we got something different. We had monster trucks a couple of weeks ago here. We've got another monstrous group of young men here who aren't going to do uh, anything with trucks, but they're going to do some amazing things with percussion. Welcome, if you will, this very unusual, i got to hear more about this group called, did I get it right, Sandbox Percussion? Is that it, guys? You nailed it. That's it. I nailed it. I hit it on the head, as they say <laughs> in the drum business. All right, so I'm going to read a few things here just because i got to give you some little buildup here. For those who have never heard, and I confess, maybe it's because I'm an old guy here, I, I'm not as tuned in to what's happening here. But this is uh, you're performing with the Pacific Symphony starting tomorrow over at the fabulous Sagerstrom Hall. Uh, and uh, here you are performing with a symphony, a group that was described by the New York Times as exhilarating, I'm told, and utterly mesmerizing by The Guardian. Grammy nominated and ensemble, part of this whole movement, generation of contemporary percussion chamber music. Tell me about that. Well, first introduce yourselves here. I've got Vic, Victor, is it Cachese? Did I get that right? Cachese, yeah, that's it. And, Nailed it again. And then we've got uh, <laughs> your cohort, your, your uh, one of the other guys in the group, Terry Sweeney, a good Irishman like me here. Say hi to Terry here. Hey, everybody. <laughs> All right. Now, what in the world is, you say you're a leading proponent of contemporary percussion chamber music? I didn't know there was any such thing as percussion chamber music, much less contemporary percussion chamber music here. So break those four words down. What the heck is it you guys do, and what are you going to do with the symphony here? Absolutely, yeah. Well, we are four percussionists who went to school together for music for per performance, for percussion performance. We're based out of New York, specifically Brooklyn, New York. And chamber music is essentially a exactly what it sounds like, music that's made in a chamber or a kind of smaller uh, space. Right. Think, but um, typically, in my, uh, in my limited knowledge of chamber music, it's Vivaldi. It's, it's four guys playing cellos or, uh, uh, you know, uh, string instruments uh, uh, right. playing some music that was written in the 1700s here. That's right. That's originally, I guess, what where it would have come from. But I guess the contemporary side of things is very specific to percussion because percussion is a pretty new instrument in the chamber music world. Of course, Vivaldi and Haydn and Mozart and these composers were sort of some of the first composers to write the first chamber music pieces. Right. People um, would get together and, you know, probably in their of uh, castles or villas or, or, you know, estates. I mean, it wasn't probably something people were playing on the streets or somewhere, but it was a, a form of entertainment, a form of music played in the parlor, played in front of a small group of people, right? Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly right. So, you know, more modern day percussion has sort of, I guess in the last sort of like really 20 or 30 years or so, definitely within the last uh, century, percussion has sort of been brought to the front of the stage. And, and, and dare I say the name, the one, uh, you've probably grown when I say this, but things like Blue Man Group that popularized it in uh, on Vegas yeah, yeah. and other things here, where suddenly the idea of watching people beat things, unusual things, trash cans, bottles, other things, other than just a traditional timpani or drum or something here, like you'd see in a, uh, a traditional symphony or even in a rock and roll band here. Uh, is that what percussion is? You guys beat a whole bunch of stuff and bring sounds out of them? It can be. I think one of the things that's exciting for us is that it can be so many different things. And unlike a string quartet, when we go to perform a, a new piece of music, the, the things we're, we might be doing tend to vary pretty widely right. in exciting ways. You know, I don't think of, I, this is going to get me in trouble, but when I think of symphonies, I know there's a percussion section way in the back somewhere, and they're beating kettle drums or they're, you know, little triangles or some, something here. But I don't see that as front and center. It's part of the thing, but it's not the solo. It's not the violin solo. It's not the piano concerto. It's not the oboe. It's, it's something that provides sort of a backdrop to it, as opposed to what it sounds like you're trying to bring in front and center. 
Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah, and that's actually maybe a good kind of segue into to Viet Quang's piece a little bit. This piece renewal that we'll be playing with Pacific Symphony. Mm-hmm. You know, it utilizes a lots of different kinds of instruments. So you know, one might normally think of the cymbals or the bass drum being played in the back of the orchestra and sort of ornamenting certain things that are happening in the orchestra. Mm-hmm. It's kind of flipped, reversed. In the sense that we kind of have the solo line on various different kinds of percussion instruments, and the orchestra actually sort of ornaments a little bit more the things that we're doing. So we feature wine glasses, tuned wine glasses. We have this sort of mega four-person drum set that we play on, and then some metallic pitched instruments that we play on in the third movement. When I was in high school, 100 million years ago, back in the Midwest, there was a chamber group that uh, was in our school and they were happened to be girls they called them the jills to be uh, you know corny and they played uh, bells right the handbells and and i've never seen it that before since but this idea of tuned handbells and they would as they sang they played you know accompanying themselves with this range of bells is that anything like this or is this more like i'm looking through your notes here i have i've never been to one of these but i know steve reich um, and John Cage, these are cutting edge uh, composers of whatever you call this stuff today. It's it's modern classical music. It's a it's a melange. It's a mixture. It's crazy. It's not it's not what I'm used to seeing when I see symphony music here. Is that definitely? Yeah, and I'll just say the the composers you just mentioned, Steve Reich and John Cage, those are composers who are a huge influence on our music and and were pretty formative for percussion quartet in general but i would say most of the work we do is we find the composers who are living today who we think maybe might be the next mozart or the next beethoven and then we work directly with them to make a brand new piece together and so the piece we're playing this weekend like victor said is by the composer viet Quang, who's a close friend of ours and he wrote this piece specifically for the four of us to play and so we think it's a you know it's a very personal piece because he he wrote it you know to us and for us right now Viet Quang that's obviously a cl- I can't believe that's his real name here uh, we have a huge Vietnamese community in fact Orange County has the largest diaspora if that's the fancy word uh, expat community of Vietnamese outside of Vietnam the largest group of Vietnamese uh, refugees settled here in Orange County large Vietnamese population is any of this. Uh, uh, maybe we'll reach some of them today here, but is this aimed at that? Is this Vietnamese style music in any way, shape, or form, or is it just his name and, and his take on modern music here? I think maybe more the the latter. Yeah, his just his name and his take on on kind of contemporary music. I don't think that it really necessarily draws from any specific backgrounds that he has right. uh, in terms of Vietnamese, but because um, there are lots of Vietnamese instruments that many would find unusual strange foreign uh that are only a couple strings or gongs or bangs or there's a lot of that kind of percussive sound that i've heard in vietnamese music Mm -hmm. definitely yeah i don't think that there's really any of that utilized in this piece although i I will say that viet has imagined this piece as sort of four people acting as kind of one person so Hmm. each of us has really truly kind of 25 percent of the musical content in the sort of solo part, the percussion quartet solo part. So, for example, when we play with the wine glasses, we sort of cheers them to each other back and forth, and it creates these different melodies and harmonies. It would be impossible to recreate by yourself because you need to actually have the other person across from you. And what's the symphony doing? Are they just watching you perform this? Or are they part of this? Are, they, are the strings playing and the horns playing and everything else? Or, or is And then you're sort of the soloist? Or is it just you on stage doing this thing and then they play their piece? Because right, they're also going to do, what, Beethoven and Bolero and some other more mm-hmm. classic kinds of pieces that night. Yeah, they're 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 basically accompanying the solo part that we're playing. So like a, like a traditional piano concerto that like you described at the beginning, but right. instead of the piano, it's the four of us. So everyone in the orchestra is playing. There's even a percussion section in the back of the orchestra who are playing with us. Just you know, a different group of instruments. So it's a whole lot of percussionists on stage, actually. Well, I applaud the Pacific Symphony for presenting, as they've done in many cases, something out of the ordinary, something daring, something different. Do you think 
We're not just sleepy suburban Orange County anymore, as we were thought of for so many as we were going on and on about here. Orange County has really come into its own through the TV shows, through this. Three and a half million people live here, you know, fifth biggest county in America here. Uh, So you're going to get a full range of people from cool hipsters to old uh, geezers like me who are trying to wrap their heads around. What is this? How would you describe it to somebody? If I if I went down to my uh, grandson who's eight and I said, you got to hear this because it's what? That's a great question. Uh, I would say because it is using, I think that it uses some everyday objects, things that you wouldn't necessarily think as being soloistic instruments, Mm -hmm. and it reimagines them for the front of the stage as a solo instrument. So that is something that is unexpected, it's new, and it's different, and it's exciting for us. The other thing I'll quickly add there is that the piece is also very visually interesting. You'll see us moving all over the stage. Of course, Victor said we're cheersing each other. We're sharing these instruments in sort of imaginative ways. And not only is it interesting sonically, but visually there's a lot happening. And that's one of the really exciting parts of the piece. Well, you certainly are riding a wave. Percussion has become hot. There are a variety of groups. What was the one I saw in something Good Morning America, the bunch of kids that were playing like trash cans or something and they were doing kind of street beats with something there's some group that tours the country doing the blue man group which i think came out of orange county or somewhere around here southern california originally uh and and what they do and, and turning percussion not just into an art but into an event and turning it into a happening, a thing, you know, mm-hmm. it's a, it's a, it's a, what do they call it? Uh, what does, um, oh, I can't think of the term, but it's in, when I'm old enough to say when the 60s, it was kind of like a happening. It was a, yeah. A, oh yeah. Something yeah. happening. A, a uh, what do they call it when they all get together and play suddenly a pop-up thing in a, in a uh, subway or something, a, a, uh, oh, yeah. a rave kind of thing or something. I can't think of the term, but I'm, I'm blanking here. But their like term. Pop, pop, pop. Yeah, yeah. No, very relevant, though, and very current for sure. Yeah. And this is uh, played where in the, uh, this is at the beginning of the program, somewhere between, uh, it looks like Wagner's Overture to the Flying Dutchman and then right into you. And then there's an right. intermission and we come back with Beethoven Concerto and Ravel's Cool Bolero that. I fell in love with when I saw the movie Ten with uh, Dudley Moore and uh, and what was her name uh, playing uh, Bo Derek. Yeah. Oh, uh, we're certainly running the gamut here. There's yeah. all kinds of composers and different sounds on this concert, so it's kind of cool. Well, quick question: You guys have taken this to another level. How did you fall into this? If you can give me a quick answer, how did you find this or fall into this? You're all studying serious percussion, and at some point you took up something that nobody had ever seen before? That's a good question. Yeah, so we we all sort of started as, I think, mostly drummers, you know, and eventually found classical music and studied classical music in conservatory. Eventually, we maybe got a little more interested in this kind of music, so playing chamber music, but just with percussionists. And so we, we all met at the Yale School of Music where that chamber music is really at the focus of the curriculum. And so we actually met each other in that program and then went from there. And since then, you've created albums. I, I, I'm told there's an album that came out in 2021 called Seven Pillars. It was nominated for two Grammy Awards in the Best Chamber Music, Small Ensemble Performance, and Best Contemporary Classical Composition. Hats off to you there. That So you've caught notice for what you're doing here. You're, with, you're touring the country with symphonies. And I'm looking at your bio here. It says you guys actually have become an ensemble in residence and part of the percussion faculty at the University of Missouri, Kansas City. Is that true? That's true. Yeah, absolutely. That This will be our second year appointed there as faculty and ensemble in residence. So we been traveling out there pretty much every week for lessons and working with composers and doing different entrepreneurial things. And I um, see you're doing uh, coaching or master classes at the prestigious places like here in Southern California, USC, Cornell, and a little school called Juilliard that a few people may have heard mm-hmm. of here. What's it like when you walk into these places? Are the are the youth, are the young percussionists today saying, finally, we get our front and center due or are they still finding this as hard to wrap their head around as many of us are here, trying to understand what it is and where it's going? 
or are they a lot of young percussionists are really excited about this music you know like i think victor said earlier a lot of the composers today are you know they're they're pulling their influences from music that is more current their music doesn't sound like beethoven's music maybe sounded and and that's so exciting right the the influence is so much more global and it comes from pop music and it comes from Balinese music. Street, and street music and, and street exactly. rhythms and hip hop and all this other stuff that's exactly. infl- that's not exactly. that's not based on a melody that I grew up with. It's based on beats and sounds and oh, yeah. and percussive noises here. Well, like my grandson will instantly start making his little, you know, beat. I can't even do it, but, you know, doom, da, da, doom, da, and he'll start doing this beatboxing thing here yeah. in front of me. Here. Uh-oh. You might have a drummer on your hands. I might. He's eight, and I'm already frightened here, you know. <laughs> That's the age. That's the, is that the age? Well, yeah, he's got that feeling for beat and rhythm and all that stuff. And I think you're tapped into this generation the, the the generations coming and the generation behind mine. And I think you're even getting some of us old geeks to look at this in a new way here and to say maybe percussion is it's all part of everything. I'll leave with this. I had a in college 100 million years ago at the University of Michigan. I roomed with a kid from Brazil for a while. And he said, in Brazil, this was in the 70s, he said, Brazil, everything is an instrument. The glass, the tabletop, your your uh, toaster, everything is something you can make a noise out of here. Everything's an instrument. I've never forgotten that. It seems like you've brought that to fruition here. I think so, yeah. That certainly is apparent in Viet's piece. I mean, we start the entire concerto off with wine glasses. So there you go. <laughs> there you go. And what? Give, what, give me some sense of what other, what other things do you incorporate? You're going to beat on wine glasses. What else do you beat on here? We play on a, this this mat, or actually some more kind of like sort of classic percussion instruments, snare drums, bass drums, kick drums. We play on uh, some different uh, mallet instruments as well. Okay. Terry has uh, a snare drum that he tips upside down and creates some different kinds of uh, sounds with that and resonating, resonating crotales and all kinds of different sorts of sounds, reimagining some normal percussion instruments in kind of a new way. Well, Terry's Irish, so I want to see, a was it a Bodrin, or what's the little uh, handheld drum that they use in yeah. Irish music here? That's right, you know it. I know it. So I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm uh, you, you got me intrigued. I'm, I'm look forward to see this. Let's give a plug for Starts Tomorrow. It's at the Sagerstrom Hall. It is entitled Beethoven and Bolero, but it's everything that's in between that I find most interesting. I've heard Beethoven, and I've heard Bolero, and those are all great pieces, but this unique uh, interlude, this unique piece stuck in the middle by this composer, I, I don't suspect that's his real name, is too clever, Viet Quang, um, and the piece is called Renewal. And I wonder where he's from. Is he from Southern? I bet he might even be from Southern California. Is he from... If he's Vietnamese, if he's he Vietnamese, up, yeah. He grew up in Georgia, but um, I think he's uh, his parents were were born and raised in Vietnam. There you go. All right, so we've got this Vietnamese composer and a bunch of uh, classical, modern. What did we call it here? You had the title for this that I thought was clever and intriguing. I got to go back and find this. Um, we're calling. Temporary. Go ahead. Yeah. What is it? Temporary con- percussion chamber music. That's it. <laughs> contemporary percussion chamber music. I didn't know there was such a thing. We're going to hear it tomorrow at Sagerstrom's Hall. Uh, I'm assuming tickets are going fast, but there's probably still a few. It's a big hall to fill, and we're just getting over to all the COVID craziness here. So the door is open at 645. The concert. It says concert preview talk. What does that mean? Do, do you or other the symphony talk to the public here, or do you just all start playing? What does it say? Yeah, we're gonna do. I think we're gonna do a little chat before before the performance starts, um, talking a little bit about the piece, maybe showing some of the instruments that we're gonna be playing. The program will actually start with all of our instruments on stage, and so we'll do a little chat right before we get started. Well, it's tomorrow, September 22nd, for those listening live, and uh, it goes through Friday and Saturday, September 23rd, 24th. Doors open at uh, 645. Uh, There's some sort of preview talk, and then you guys launch into this program, which is, it's kind of classical music from A to Z. You've got the classical stuff, the Wagner and Beethoven, and those kinds of things we associate with classical music, plus 
Ravel that was kind of later, isn't that kind of later classical music? That that's kind of a a hipper kind of cooler piece uh, than yeah. than the than the classical period. And then we bring it full circle to today, and this bunch of crazy kids beating on wine glasses and drums <laughs> and stuff here, playing some piece written by Vietnam Vietnamese artist, uh, all about bringing the drums up front and turning it into the sounds of today. I think that's what you're doing here. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, very cool. I look forward to. Uh, I I know. I think we're. I know I'm going to be there. I'm actually going to bring my eight year old grandson. You, how, how do you think? How do you think he'll react to it? Because he's never been to a symphony. I don't know if he's going to hang in there through all the. If he even knows there is such a thing as symphony music here, but I'm hoping to blow his mind here. This is a good. This is a good first concert. I think. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he, you know, he likes hip hop and he likes that kind of stuff and everything here. And I, you know, I don't know how he reacted, but I've sort of set him up. I said, this is something you've never heard of. And I think that's all that fits the description for most of us. This is probably okay. something we've never heard of before. Definitely true. <laughs> all right. Well, I look at because that's what life is about. Trying new stuff. It's not just about hearing the same stuff done over and over and over again. Uh, the Pacific Symphony. Hats off to them. Very clever. Very unique and very uh, and very intriguing. I urge everybody to check it out. Go to the website, which is pacificsymphony.org. And uh, is there a piece they can hear from it? Where, where can they sample this? If they want to get their head around prepared, there must be YouTube videos of you guys doing stuff or something. Yeah, like. there's actually a couple of YouTube videos of this exact piece going around playing some other orchestras. But we also have a YouTube channel, Sandbox Percussion, if you just search it on YouTube. Okay. Or Spotify as well. You can find all kinds of videos and recordings of us doing uh, the kinds of things that we do. And I'm sorry. And is there a site where they can go find your music or buy it, or if they want to, if they want to take it more? I don't know if you guys are going to be. I don't know if they do this in symphony like they do at jazz concerts or pop concerts. But if somebody's sitting out there with uh, CDs for sale or something and T-shirts and other things. Yeah, we usually do that at our concerts. I'm not sure if we'll be doing that for this symphony concert. But if you want to check out some of our music, you can go on our website. You can buy any one of our albums or just stream it on spotify okay uh, it's all on our website yeah. and the website is sandboxpercussion.com sandbox percussion and how did the name come about just because you everything you throw into the sandbox you're going to play with here pretty much you got it <laughs> <laughs> bunch of kids let's throw everything let's throw the truck let's throw the the star wars character let's throw the little drum let's throw everything we can find in the house put them on a little sandbox and play with them here that's right. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thanks for coming on, guys, here. I look forward. Is this your first time in Orange County here playing this stuff? Here? I think so, yeah. yeah. First time playing in Orange County, yeah. Well, I hope it goes over well. I hope. I think you'll find a receptive audience. As I said, this isn't just sleepy suburbia anymore. It hasn't been for a long time. Uh, there's a lot of real hip and cool stuff all around over there, cool restaurants. And you have to go over to um, Costa Mesa, which is like five, ten minutes away, take an Uber over there and go over to the camp and where they have all these really weird restaurants and bars and all that kind of stuff. And all these old abandoned warehouses, they turned, again, kind of an alternative, they call it the alternative mall. It's mm -hmm. a, it's an anti-mall, but it has cool. coffee shops and bars and restaurants and all sorts of cool things. And it's five, nice. ten minutes from where you guys are at over there. Well, check it out. Yeah. All right, check it out. This is the Pacific Symphony tomorrow, Friday, and uh, Friday, Saturday, and tomorrow, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, let me get it right. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, Sagerstrom Hall, Pacific Symphony. Go hear this piece that starts with Beethoven, ends with Bolero, and in between, you're going to see a bunch of guys playing in a sandbox here. Uh, I look forward to seeing awesome. it. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks for having us on. Thanks for coming on today, guys. Right. Here. Thanks. Well, there you have it. If that's not unusual, I don't know what is. And intriguing. Only here on OC Spotlight do you hear about these kinds of things taking place. Right here in Orange County's only community radio station, octalkradio.net. Streaming live from our studios here at the University of California, Irvine's Beal Applied Innovation Center. <laughs>